Here in this code sample, we create a new module. Creating a new module involves with um, creating a separated file where we write our code in JavaScript for defining the new module. We define a new module using the function define. The first argument should be an array of the modules we need. The modules we need uh, for the code we write in our definition for the new module. So in this case I specify just one module I want to use. The second argument should be the function that will be invoked when uh, this required module is loaded. When that happens this function will be invoked and the reference for the object that represents this module will be passed over is an argument for uh, this anonymous function. This anonymous function should return a reference for an object that um, will be the object that represents the module we define. This way, when loading the new module we have just defined, the returned reference will be passed over as an argument to this function. The object that we return is an object with uh, two properties, set string and restore string, meaning that over here we can invoke on the object its reference is passed over to this parameter, my module parameter, we can invoke the set string and the restore string methods. Now if we go over the code we can see that set string simply takes two arguments. One is uh, the ID of the element its uh, uh, text should be set and then using the DOM module we get the reference for the object for the object uh, that represents in the document object model that specific element and here we take the current text it shows and set a new one instead the new text is the text that is passed over as a second argument to the set string function over here you can see that once the new module we create is loaded set string is invoked and over here this h1 element instead of uh, having blah blah on screen we have uh, this text once the three uh, seconds pass this anonymous function is invoked and here we call the restore string method. The restore string just gets the ID of the element. We want to restore the previous text. And here we first get the reference for the object in the DOM that represents that element. Then we set the text, the previous text, the one that was kept in archive array and here we just delete that uh, key value pair from the archive array so restore string just restore the previous string let's take a look how the code works so I refresh first we get the string we love JavaScript and then after three uh, seconds we get blah blah back to the screen now, the HTML file that used the Dojo library uh, includes in its beginning the creation of an object that responsible takes care uh, after configuring our use of the Dojo toolkit. Creating the Dojo config global property, meaning it is actually a property in window object we can assign it with an object that its properties uh, will 
actually configure our use of the Dojo Toolkit. So here we specify that we want to use the Dojo Toolkit in asynchronous way. And here we specify the packages that we uh, want to set uh, while using the Dojo Toolkit. And in this case, I specify only one package. The array includes one element, which is an object that describes only one package we want to set. Uh, we set a package with the name Life Michael Modules, and here we specify the location. Now, the location I specify actually refers the modules folder where I kept the mymodule.js file, the file where I defined the new module. Now, the reason for the additional uh, string, this one, is um, in order to allow us to use uh, modules coming from this uh, folder, even though the Dojo Toolkit is loaded from another server. Now, if we try to execute this code sample and debug it, let's refresh and let's uh, set a breakpoint here in this line now uh, let's refresh one more time in order to have the debugger uh, stop the execution here in this line and here we can actually check the value of each one of the expression we see. For example, location.pathName, if I check the value of this expression, I get that its value is uh, slash demo slash module demo dot html. Well, makes sense. We have a folder demo um, on our HTTP server and inside demo we have the file module demo dot html that includes the code in JavaScript currently running. Now, let's see what is the value of all this. So I will add it as a new expression. And as you can see, I get um, just the slash demo, meaning that we shall actually get here slash demo slash uh, modules. which is the exact folder where we keep the mymodule.js file. Let's resume it.